So as many of us are working from home, it's useful to look at some of the tools that VectorWorks has available for us to be able to do that efficiently and effectively without too much loss of work. And one of those is uh, referencing, or file referencing. Uh, a lot of different versions of that uh, in terms of what kinds of files can be referenced. I'm primarily referring here to referencing one VectorWorks file from another VectorWorks file. Um, and this is distinct from project sharing, which uh, I've discussed in another talk, which is a bit more full-featured and uh, has a lot more options. Uh, referencing is a little bit simpler, uh, but it gives you fewer options. And referencing is appropriate when there's very, very distinct boundaries between the kinds of work that uh, individuals who are working on the team are doing. So for example, if um, uh, you have a structural engineer working on the team with an architect, uh, the structural engineer's drawings could be referenced into the architectural file um, and referred to as a reference, or vice versa. Or uh, perhaps you have an interior designer working on the project and all of the interior elevations are being referenced into the uh, project file. Referencing is a great candidate uh, for that kind of situation. Um, so in this case, I'm going to demonstrate that uh, <clears throat> briefly uh, with this sheet of details. So this is in a uh, larger project file. You can see that I have um, some uh, sheet layers um, uh, over here with uh, various architectural sheets. So there's a, a detail sheet, for example. Right. We can navigate to that detail sheet. And on that detail sheet, I have a distinct viewport for each detail. And um, incidentally, the reason that I've done it that way is so that each of those details can be referenced in the annotations of in individual uh, elevations. And you can see this little bright green linking symbol tells me that detail 18A4 is referenced here. And so back on my detail sheet, If I change detail 18 and renumber it as, uh, say, detail 21, right? and then I go back to that elevation, you see that it's gone ahead and changed over here. But uh, I digress. That's not really a referencing issue. That's just a viewport issue. So let's go back to this sheet. Let's fix that before I forget. Anyway, so each of these sheet layer viewports is uh, referring back to a design layer, which is my detail layer. But if I click on this detail, you'll see from the object info palette that this is a referenced viewport. So there's a couple of ways of referencing other files in Vectorworks. There's um, sort of an older legacy methodology, but what I want to focus on today is kind of the current way of doing it, which is that you would go to uh, View, Create Viewport. Generally, you would do this from a design layer. And uh, here on the viewport, I would go ahead and navigate over to the design layer where I wanted the file to be referenced to, and I could select a source. So an external document, I already have one here. So I'll do that. And then if I click on layers, you can see all the layers that are visible, that are, exist in that document. So I'll select the only one there is. I can specify which classes are going to be viewed here. And in this case, I would display planar objects. 
And, and here it is. It's just a duplicate of the one that I already have. So these are essentially just identical. And so any changes that happen on this source file, whenever I refresh my viewports, and here under my navigation palette, I've got my uh, referenced files are listed, and it's up to date. But if I make a change in one place, I can go ahead and update it. And so that's really useful um, to do, because somebody could be working on a sheet of details, for example. And all I have to do is reference the file. and um, then uh, any changes get updated whenever I update uh, the viewport reference. And so long as I keep the name of the file the same, then um, I could even update that periodically. So let's go ahead and edit this reference here from the navigation palette. You can see that it links over to the file. And when I set it up, I can choose whether it's an absolute path or a relative path. In this case, I want to make it a relative path. And that's because um, everybody in my office, we share a Google Drive. So uh, each project and project folder and folder structure is replicated on everyone's workstation um, throughout the day as people are saving their work. And so by making this an a relative path rather than an absolute path, then whenever whoever's working on the details updates the details, Vectorworks knows exactly where to find it. I don't have to, to find it. I would choose absolute path if this were a situation, uh, for example, an office where there was a separate server that was dedicated, a file server, and everyone would want to refer back to that server. That would be an appropriate um, use for an absolute path. And um, I don't like to automatically update my references. I like to do that consciously and manually. And save a cache to the disk just makes everything a little bit faster. And if that link ever gets broken, I can just browse and refind it. So, so even if I choose an absolute path initially and then I, I lose where that file is, I can go ahead and reestablish that link. So that's it. That's pretty straightforward. The nice thing about referencing, um, too, is that while these are all files that have been generated in the same office with the same class nomenclature, that isn't always the case. I may have uh, a survey file from a survey engineer, and there may be um, a whole host of classes that I don't normally use. And so by keeping the survey file as a uh, reference, then those classes can uh, stay kind of safely isolated within the viewport and uh, they don't have to cross over into my um, overall file. Um, so it's really important to go ahead and pay attention to those paths. Um, the other thing to consider, as I also uh, discussed uh, elsewhere, is that you're not just limited to referencing uh, Vectorworks files. You can also vector, uh, reference DWGs uh, or even PDFs. So for example, um, I could um, go ahead and uh, import a PDF. And uh, here's that same sheet of details that I saved as a PDF. And I will go ahead and snap to geometry, and I will reference it, again, either as an absolute or relative path. Um, and because I'm snapping to geometry, it takes it a second to render. I can go ahead and snap it exactly so. So there's the PDF. Here's the Vectorworks file. I can just move that off to the side. And then over here uh, on my detail sheet, because all of these are being referenced back from the same design layers, each of these sheet layers is uh, perfectly happy to continue to function. 
takes a little bit longer to render a PDF than on screen. Uh, but there you have it. So that's really useful. For example, if you had multiple iterations of the same interior elevation sheets or the same civil engineering sheets, you could just have your um, uh, consultant or colleague uh, save that as a PDF, keep it in the same folder with the same file name, maybe appending uh, an, a name, uh, a suffix to the old file so that you know it's an old file, but you don't throw it away necessarily. But keep the same name, and uh, then you can keep updating that, and that's a great way to incorporate PDFs from other disciplines who may or may not be Vectorworks users right into your drawing file, and you can uh, reference them to your details and so forth. So I hope this has been a useful sort of overview of referencing. Of course, you can get into greater depth with the online help and various uh, tutorials. And uh, good luck out there.